Here's an ICO model 145 signal tracer. You might recall a previous video that I made of this unit where I demonstrated an electronic restoration of the actual tracer itself. These are mainly used for troubleshooting radios. If you have a defective radio that's not operating, you can use the probe of the signal tracer to go down through the various RF and IF stages of the radio to see where you're losing your signal. And basically all this is is a glorified crystal radio coupled to an audio amplifier. The probe contains a capacitor, a diode, a crystal diode, and a resistor. And its purpose is to strip off the RF frequency, leaving only the audio portion to be amplified by the signal tracer itself. Now when I got this tracer, the probe was in very bad shape. The, the, the cable was rotten and shortened together, and the original 1N48 crystal diode inside of the probe was, was leaky. So I sort of... Uh, patch this back up so it can be usable again. For a crystal diode I used a an old germanium detector diode out of a junk radio chassis and I added a 0 .01 microfarad capacitor between the probe's RF input and the anode of the crystal diode. That was done to help prevent the possibility of B plus voltage from the radio under test being fed back up into the signal tracer which could possibly cause damage. Okay I'm going to show you something fun here. I was goofing around with the outside antenna. I have about a 20 foot wire antenna running out of my shop over to a nearby tree and I have a 200k ohm resistor connected across the RF input to the probe. I'll turn this on and show you what happens. Take about a minute or so for the tubes to warm up. In its own unique way of doing business, and let's share a little bit of that with our listeners for those that might not be familiar with it. Well, been, been born and raised here all my life, going to school here. What we have is a very basic crystal radio. We try to know every one of our I don't know how well the microphone on the camera is picking it up, but you can actually hear one or two weaker stations in the background. And the reason for that is is, is because we have no actual tuned circuit between the antenna and the crystal diode. So whatever RF energy is out there is being picked up by this crystal diode and are being picked up by the outside antenna and fed through this crystal diode and the resulting audio signal is being amplified by the signal tracer. Right down from what I like to call Dennis Row. You know where all the dentists are located? You can find Medicap Pharmacy. Now if I were to construct a a coil and a and add a tuning capacitor to the front end of this, I could I could stand a better chance of uh not having all these stations coming in on top of each other. I could pick each station out. Go to www.firstatebnk. But yeah, I thought you might get a kick out of that. Another thing you can do with these signal tracers is bypass the crystal diode and go directly to the input and you can test things like phonograph cartridges to see if they have any output and as you can tell this one does. Okay, I now have torn apart on the bench a typical mid-60s general electric five-tube AC-DC radio, basically the same circuit that's used from the that was used from the 40s on up through the end of the tube radio era, and I have it plugged into the isolation transformer for safety, which you should do with all radios, especially when working on them apart on the workbench.
Now this rodeo, nothing's wrong with it. But I want to use it to demonstrate our signal tracer. And right now I'm going to check the output of the second IF transformer before it goes into the uh, detector stage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you, can hear the, and you can hear the output on the signal. The bottom line is And you should be able to go back through the stages of the radio, and you should still get a signal. You might have to increase the gain of the signal tracer as you go further back into the radio, but you should still get a signal. Okay, moving back, I'm now going to check the signal at the input grid or control grid of the 12BA6 first IF amplifier tube. Now it will be a weaker signal than what we had before, but there should still be something there. And there is something there. So you get the idea how this works. Now to show you how sensitive this signal tracer is, place the RF probe next to my soldering iron and uh, it's picking up the uh, signal from my soldering iron. And now I've moved back to the antenna connection on the tuning capacitor. And as you can hear, I'm getting a signal off of that too. In fact, I'll demonstrate something else. Even with the radio powered off and using the built-in antenna with the gain turned up I'm still getting uh, getting some RF input through the uh, RF probe here actually what I'm getting now is a, a 97 WOKK and FM station coming through so interesting so yeah, you get the idea how these signal tracers work now. They're, they can be handy if you've got a radio with a dead or, or a dead stage or a stage that's giving you trouble. These, will, these devices will help you localize the problem. In these terminals mark VTVM, that's where you can connect a vacuum tube voltmeter or an oscilloscope or whatever and actually measure the output of the signal that you're testing. And this signal tracer also has provisions where uh, you can check a possible defective speaker in a radio against the built-in speaker in the signal tracer to determine if the speaker is good. Although that's really not necessary, you know, I've got speakers here that I can use for that purpose. My main purpose for this will be the actual audio input of the signal tracer, whether it be to check components such as phonograph cartridges, etc., etc., or if I'm using the RF probe here for checking for a dead stage in a radio, it should be, this should be a fairly handy piece of equipment. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. And more to come later.